everybody, welcome back to my channel, it's Cass. Today's painting is an alcoholic painting of a uh, rose garden in the rain. And I thought it would be fun to turn this painting into a tutorial because I haven't done any alcohol ink related tutorials yet. I've just done some chats. I apologize in advance for the white noise behind me. It's a really, really hot day and I've got the air conditioning on, so sorry the sound quality is not going to be perfect. Okay, so, about this little tutorial today. I feel like I have to start by saying I didn't really intend to turn this into a tutorial at the beginning and it's kind of more complex a piece that I had intended to teach about so I am going to make a really cool tutorial about it but it makes me realize that very shortly I'm going to have to do like a beginner's alcohol ink tutorial because there's a lot of ins and outs to think about. What I used was, uh, I used a 12 by 12 inch sheet of Nara paper. I also heavily employed my masking fluid. So if you would like to follow this tutorial and you have no masking fluid, go out to the store and get some right now. This is the masking fluid that I'm using right now. It's a Pibio drawing gum. And it's pretty awesome. It's tinted blue. Uh, it comes off quite easily. It does mask efficiently. I like it. This is the first masking fluid that I've tried, honestly, and uh, I really dig it. If you guys have any other masking fluids that you've found work really, really well, please let me know in the comments because I'm very curious about that. That's a tool I intend to employ often. Okay, so you're going to need your narrow paper, you're going to need, or you can do this on another kind of paper, you can do this on Yupo paper, but its erasability is not so awesome, so that is why I'm choosing narrow today. So, your paper, your masking fluid, you're going to need a couple of brushes. Basically, I used this brush and this brush. I use this brush most, mostly for um, lifting techniques, for erasing out my alcohol ink with more alcohol. And I use this little baby one for my fiddly designs. If it ever appears that I'm holding this weird, it's because I broke it, so I kind of have to, like, baby it a little. So you're going to want your alcohol inks. Today, uh, the inks that I used were... I used Stream, Patina, I used Flamingo, Red Pepper, Amethyst, and Sunshine Yellow. I also used a little bit of black and some black uh, India ink to do my touch-ups. I find very, very useful for this kind of exercise a syringe is Very, very valuable. I'm trying to come up with an adjective better than valuable, and I can't. It's indispensable. That's what I wanted to say. Indispensable. Because with a syringe, you can drop a teeny tiny amount of alcohol onto your palate to activate ink that you already have that is dry. And that, that that's just magic, because if you've worked at all with alcohol ink, you've noticed the insane amount of alcohol that it takes. So. A tool like this that you can meter out a teeny drop of alcohol by a teeny drop of alcohol, it is worth its weight in gold. Get yourself a syringe. Okay, so now that you know what you need, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to uh, let you know how we're going to start. What I did was I started by making a pencil drawing of my, my roses. I wanted it to look like they were kind of hanging into the frame, dripping with raindrops and with like a beautiful flowy wet and wet background behind it. So I don't want to mess up my roses or my stems or my foliage when I do that beautiful wet and wet background. So I'm going to mask off all of the roses and all of the foliage behind it and you're going to see what that looks like. I like to kick this off by showing you guys what my palette looks like for painting with alcohol inks. Basically it looks like a train wreck. But essentially I keep it pretty much the same as I keep my palette for watercolor painting and I'll tell you why. The alcohol evaporates very very quickly, but the ink is still good after. You can still activate that ink with more alcohol or more ink after to have either a more diluted alcohol ink or a strong color if you just add more color to it to activate it. So I keep a compartment for dirty alcohol. I can keep a compartment or just a bottle cap for clean alcohol. The dirty alcohol is actually very, very useful because when you want neutral tones, go into your dirty alcohol. It's not a waste. It's not a throwaway. 
when you want something that's brown or muted, use your dirtied up alcohol to your advantage. So I've started here by making a pencil drawing and then I masked my whole pencil drawing and let that dry thoroughly. Then I wet my paper with my alcohol and I add some colors that I want to use in my background. I want it to look nice and rainy and fresh so I'm going to use uh, some of that amethyst, I'm going to use the patina and a whole lot of alcohol. I like to use wet and wet techniques like this in backgrounds when it comes to alcohol ink because I believe that it produces a really really beautiful interesting unexpected wet and wet background effect I just love it I wet the whole thing with alcohol add some colors and then I use my paintbrush as you can see to move the inks around I add more alcohol near the bottom to help it bleed down into the foreground you can see that I'm moving the paper all the time moving the paper but I'm always trying to guide the droplets down that's because I want it to look like everything is heavy with water droplets, everything is dripping and saturated. You can see I'm employing my spray bottle here too to wet and continue to melt my inks to keep them nice and fluid. You can see on the left hand side how where it's starting to dry, it's already looking lovely and ghostly and soft. That's what I love the most about working wet and wet with alcohol inks. Incidentally, do you guys see a cool little like alien-like skull in the bottom right hand corner? Bad ass. Couple more little tilts and shakes around to help keep my droplets dripping down. And now I've got it pretty much how I want it. So the next stage is going to be taking off that masking fluid. But be very, very careful to make sure that it is utterly, utterly, utterly dry, and I mean the ink, before you start taking that masking fluid off. I mean the joy of that is that I'm working on narrow paper, so the places where I accidentally get a little extra ink, I can always just erase them off with more alcohol later, but if you're using Yupo, it's not going to be that easy. Make sure your masking fluid and all of the ink on top of it is perfectly, perfectly dry before you go rubbing at it. So I'm removing all of the masking fluid here. Um, after that, I'm going to remask the flowers to paint in the foliage and everything behind them. When I do that, uh, there are some places where I'm going to paint roses later that I'm just going to paint them straight into the wet ink uh, in the foliage because I want them to look kind of out of focus. But all of the flowers that I want to look nice and sharp and in focus, I'm going to remask. Be careful not to miss any of your masking fluid because while the tint of it helps, once you've already painted over it, it can be hard to see where you've masked. So you don't want to forget to unmask any area that you have masked, as it were, when you're done your painting. Imagine selling this painting to a collector and they accidentally rub off a piece of masking fluid that was forgotten on your piece. So here you see I'm remasking my roses. Make sure that your masking fluid layer is not too thin because if it's too thin it will rub off really really easily and your edges won't be nearly as clean. But if you lay it on relatively heavily you'll get a nice even coverage. It will be easy to remove and you'll just be glad that you did in general. So I'm masking off all the flower areas, everything that I want to be pink and yellow because my roses here are going to be pink and yellow. Everything that's going to be rose colored, I'm masking and then I'm going to go back and do all of the greens and blues and purples of the foliage and the stems and everything once that's masked. Now again, wait till your masking fluid is 100% dry before you move on to the next part. Here we're going to go ahead and hydrate the foliage corner with alcohol and we're going to work wet and wet just like we did with the background. Although we have to be a little bit more careful because we don't want it to run amok all over the lovely background that we've already laid out. Here I've got a little stream. I'm also going to use some patina. I'm going to use some amethyst. I'm going to fill in the color over here and then I'll 
erase out a couple of sections to drop some roses into. Just use your paintbrush to kind of guide everything to the edges, guide it in between your blossoms. Be careful about where you've masked. You don't want to accidentally have a white spot later. Little spray with a water bottle here to keep everything hydrated, but you see that I've got guarded the rest of my painting from my spray bottle. I don't want to get a whole bunch of errant droplets hitting the back of my uh, picture. That's looking nice. I'm going to add some amethyst here, drop that right in. And I'm going to just have fun with my paintbrush, moving that around, scribbling it about. I'm making leaves and, you know, it's far from realism, so just kind of have fun with it. Let it go. You see, the only place that I'm really being careful about my brushwork is the edge where I want it to look like the outline of leaves. I don't want the alcohol ink to just run all over the background and drip everywhere in this stage. I still want to retain the leaf shape in the silhouette. Now I'm pretty satisfied with the foliage corner. I'm going to go ahead and paint in the stems, the calluses, the leaves and everything that I had masked before. I'm going to have fun with different colors here. Right now I'm using kind of like an aqua green that I've mixed up and I'm going to use warm greens and cool greens and all kinds of greens and just uh, really have a lot of fun with it. You want to be careful here that you don't have too much alcohol in your brush. Uh, if your ink is very dilute, let it evaporate a little bit before you paint these stems with it. Because you know what alcohol ink likes to do. If there's too much of it, it just runs for the hills. And you don't want, to, uh, you don't want that to happen when you're trying to make nice, even stems. So take your time to uh, paint in your stems and your leaves and everything. And be careful that you're using very, very uh, dry ink, if you will, that most of the alcohol has evaporated out of. It'll be a lot easier to form that line. I remember when I first started working with alcohol ink, I thought it was imp impossible to make a brush stroke with it. And I love brush strokes. That's one of my favorite things about painting. But I realized that it really just takes exactitude of alcohol. If there is too much alcohol, you can't form a brush stroke because your brush stroke immediately wants to run. But if your ink has evaporated a little bit and it's a more highly concentrated dye, then you can have a very lovely brush stroke, almost like a watercolor stroke. So practice that. It will pay off. Have fun here with your different greens and uh, even with black if you like with blues, with any colors you want to establish the values in those stems and leaves. I really went wild here and just used all different kinds of greens and honestly I did not really um, follow any kind of pattern or I did not try to do this realistically. I just had fun and chose different greens and went with it. So you could go a little bit more structured if you like but or you could just have fun with it like I did. It's really your world. Now it's time to drop some alcohol onto my foliage corner and erase some rose holes out of it, as it were. You're going to see I'm going to use both uh, Q-tips with the alcohol and also paint brushes to erase that ink. I'm not trying to make perfect circles. I'm just clearing out a little space. Once it's more or less ink-free, I'm not going to be too crazy about it. I'm going to drop some alcohol in there, at, drop a little bit of ink, and start moving it around with my paintbrush. Be patient here in the erasing process. A little bit of alcohol, then clean those bristles and go back and erase with your dry brush or erase with the dry Q-tip. A little bit more alcohol, keep erasing, keep at it. Resist the urge to put too much alcohol at a time because then it'll spread into the area that you're painting that you don't want to erase and you will be sorry. Okay, so here I'm going to drop some flamingo ink and some alcohol into a couple of those holes that I've made. I'm just going to kind of move that alcohol and ink around to fill up that space that I've made. A little more ink. 
remember there are no rules here how much to add, just be careful that you don't add too much at a time because oh, if it starts running all over you're not going to have an easy time stopping it. Take some sunshine yellow, I'm going to drop some into, uh, whoops, I accidentally spilled a drop where I didn't intend to, but that'll just be a little accidental rose. Nothing wrong with that. Happy accidents. So do the same thing with the yellow that you did with the pink and just kind of blend it in with alcohol. Ease it slowly to the edge of the other alcohol ink so that it doesn't all jumble up together. When you're done with that and it's thoroughly, thoroughly dried, take off your masking fluid. So I got all my masking fluid off here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pink colored pencil and mark the flowers that I intend to paint pink. Just because I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants here and I don't want to get mixed up and paint something the wrong color. Okay, so how we're going to start the roses is we're going to lay a foundation wet and wet and then clarify the details after. Which is similar to how we might do it in watercolor maybe, but you have to be a little bit more careful. Because you don't want to make too big a puddle of alcohol that it spreads everywhere. So start each rose with a light application of alcohol or alcohol tinted with a little bit of uh, pink or yellow ink. That's what I'm doing here. And then go back with uh, more concentrated ink and work wet and wet to establish the main values in the center of each rose. You'll see that certain techniques develop softer effects, certain techniques will develop hard lines, and as you get acquainted with that, you can use that to your advantage. Notice that uh, dark ink that you paint into a section that's already wet, once it dries, it will appear soft and flowing. Dark ink that is painted over top of a dry surface will have a nice hard line. And if your brush is nearly dry with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of dye in it, you can achieve quite a brushy stroke. So have fun with that. Now you can see my tablet in the corner of the screen. I'm obviously looking at some reference photos, but I'm not particularly trying to duplicate them. And I don't think that you should either. We're not making a botanical illustration of a rose here. This is an impressionistic painting of roses, and it's okay if they don't look perfect. Remember to pause the video anytime you need to have more time to work or to have more time to have things dry. I accelerated this video a lot and cut out a good deal in the making of the tutorial. My original footage was at least an hour long. So give yourself all the time that you need. Pause the video as often as you want, for as long as you want, to have your proper drawing time, to have all the time that you need to work on this painting to make it your own. If you're using narrow paper like I am, you can use lifting techniques to lift back out areas that you want to lighten later, which is a lot of fun. Do this just with a little bit of alcohol in your brush, not a lot of alcohol, because it will want to run if you've got too much, but a little bit of alcohol uh, to wet your brush, and just lift, lift, lift the color out. Lift, and then wipe on a paper towel. You can see that I've got my painting on top of a sheet of paper towel, and that's exactly what I'm using it for. The more you work with this medium, the more you'll get a feel for how much liquid is in your brush and how much you're going to need. Just like with watercolors, you may need to wipe your brush on the edge of your palette, wipe your brush on a paper to blot some of that liquid out, and do the exact same thing with your alcohol ink. Use your syringe to uh, meter out your alcohol where you want to, both directly on your paper and on your canvas. Use your syringe to drip droplets of alcohol into ink that you want to activate on your palette and also to hydrate areas of your paper directly where you want to paint wet and wet, like on the next rose. One of the beautiful things about that syringe is that the alcohol doesn't evaporate in it. Like if you just had an open cup or bottle of ink sitting there, the alcohol will still evaporate. But in the syringe, this doesn't happen, which is so useful. And like, I mean, I remember back when I started using alcohol inks, I would have my bottle of alcohol and I would just pour a little teeny bit from the bottle 
right onto my palate, but honestly, I never need that much. And it evaporates so quickly that I find I use a lot less to create nearly the exact same effect just by dripping it from my syringe and using less. Here I'm going to use a little bit of black, but um, I'm going to stop right after because honestly, I don't know if you can see it because the video quality is poor, but there's uh, there's some solids in the ink. This is an ink that was given to me, and I don't know exactly what kind of ink it is, but obviously it is not a pure dye ink. Obviously there are pigments in there. I can see some like black graininess in it, so I stopped using it right away. Not to say that an ink like this doesn't have its place somewhere, but it doesn't have its place in the painting that I'm working on right now, that's all. So now we're going to do the yellow roses, and it's going to be exactly the same as uh, with the pink and red ones. Wet your rose with alcohol, or very, very heavily diluted ink, and work wet and wet to establish the values. After that, keep building up and deepening those values, working wet on dry. Because remember, these inks only take a couple of minutes to dry. So work wet and wet for a moment, do something else, and then it'll be perfectly dry and you can just keep working wet on dry. It's speedy that way, which is super cool. You know, these days we don't have a lot of time to indulge in our passions. We don't have a lot of time to do we, what we want. So one of the things that I find really cool about alcohol ink is that you can start and stop quickly. It dries quickly. And so... If you can plan well and you can organize your time, there's so much that you can do with it in a small amount of time. And you can drop your painting in the middle of it, depending on the circumstances, and pick it up later at the drop of a hat. There are not a lot of painting styles that are like that. If you're using acrylic paint, you can't just let it dry all over your palette and then go back and paint with it later. It turns into plastic. Your alcohol ink, if you accidentally put too much ink on your palette and it gets wasted, quote unquote, later on it's still good. Drip a little bit more ink onto it or a little bit of alcohol out of your dropper and that ink is beautiful and bright and colorful just like it used to be. So for that reason, this medium is very special and I love it for that. It's fun, it's unexpected, it's soft, it's hard, it's wild and spontaneous. It's vibrant and colorful. I love alcohol ink. And I hope this video has inspired you to play with it too because it is just so much fun. Now that I've established the center values with my sunshine yellow, I'm just using a little bit of a uh, that red pepper that I've mixed into my sunshine yellow to create a little bit of an orange for the deeper tones in my yellow rose. You'll notice that I'm using just like a plastic dollar store palette and honestly I suggest that you use the same thing or the same kind of thing because it has many compartments um, so it's very useful for a medium that wants to run all over the place. I've tried to use palettes like this for other kinds of painting before and did not enjoy them but honestly I think I have found their purpose in my studio. Sections for all of your colors and tints, sections for dirty alcohol, sections for clean alcohol, sections upon sections upon sections. Sorry about my head in the way of the camera. Now I'm almost to the end of this painting and I kind of feel like I want to um, bring something up. I'm not really that happy with the end result of this painting. I want to be, and I like the colors and stuff, but there are definitely things that I would have changed if I had planned it a little bit more thoroughly. One thing I would have done is I would have changed the placement of my out-of-focus roses. I would have concentrated the well-focused roses closer to the top right corner and left the out-of-focus roses more behind them so that they, they looked like they were fading bad. I don't enjoy the effect. I like the I like the blotty 
spontaneous, out of focus roses in the foliage, but I don't want them to be there. I want them to be placed differently. So I smell a redo of this painting in the future. Here I'm just spraying a little bit of good old fashioned alcohol. There is no dye in it, and I'm just protecting my drawing a little bit with, uh, with a, an envelope. I want to create some droplety textural value in the background, but I don't want to melt little holes in my roses willy-nilly. A spray bottle is really, really cool for making effects like that, but you want to be careful that you protect any work that you don't want to get randomly sprayed. Because a spray bottle badly aimed will melt your painting like nobody's business. Here now that I've done spraying the droplets, I'm just taking some clean alcohol in my trusty little bottle cap, low tech, that's me, and I'm uh, just dropping some little water droplets all over my roses. I'm going to give them a little bit of, uh, of depth after, but for now I'm just melting little holes all over the place. I want this to look like during or after a heavy rain in the garden, so I want everything to be heavy and laden and dripping and glistening. One of the fun things about alcohol ink is how it wants to work in bubbles and dots, which is super fun and it's therapeutic just dropping little dots of alcohol over it and watching the bubbles form. I don't know why it's satisfying, but it is. Some of my uh, droplets got a little enormous, but it's not the end of the world, you know? Like I said, it's not a realistic painting. It's a painting from my heart. It's impressionistic, and so what if uh, some of my water droplets could be ping pong balls? It's my world. That's how I encourage you guys to look at it, too, because, I mean, like, I think about it like this. This is not the last painting you're ever going to make in your life. Hopefully your life is going to be full of many other paintings, and I know mine is. I'm going to paint a million other things, and the next rose painting I paint will be even better, and the next one after that, well, maybe not, but the point is that we keep working on it to create something beautiful, and it doesn't have to be perfect this time, as long as it makes us happy. If it's not perfect, like this one obviously isn't for me, I mean, just try again next time. Here I'm doing my finishing touches with uh, India ink, because that's just one of my all-time favorite things to do. Nothing is dark and black and beautiful and bold like India ink, and it's my favorite finishing touch tool ever. So I'm just going ahead and making some nice, fun outlines. I am not making a complete structural outline like a stained glass window. I am just outlining where I feel like it. Um, in the focal points, there are a lot of areas that I'm not going to use any ink at all. I'm not going to focus any more than they already are. I'm just going to pull out some of the uh, hard edges on some of the flowers that I want to pop out a little bit more. And that's about it. Do what you want here. Focus on what you like. If there's a form in a flower that you particularly want to draw someone's eye to, outline it. There are no rules. I want to thank you all for uh, joining me for this painting today. I hope you had fun. I sure had a great time. And you know what? If you guys uh, painted a picture with me today, I would love to see a picture of your paintings. That would be fantastic. If you want to let me know in the comments, that would be just great. Have an awesome day, and uh, I hope to paint together again soon. Don't forget to put your name on it and be proud of what you did.